Good day guys, Sergeant Foos here with part 2 of WPA Enterprise Hacking on the Wi-Fi Pineapple Mark 7. So last time I showed you how to capture the username, the challenge and the response. So now what we need to do is we need to convert that in order to crack it. And we're going to use Hashcat Windows 10 for this. The reason I'm using a Windows 10 version and not a Linux version is that I'm going to use my powerful GPU to crack the code, which makes it much faster than uh, cracking on a uh, laptop GPU or a virtual machine GPU. So um, uh, the link uh, for Hashcat Windows is in the description below of the video. Um, one thing I didn't mention last time is that uh, when you're creating this enterprise AP there's a couple options and we picked the CCMP one which is uh, yeah, the latest uh, type of encryption for WPA2 uh, but there are also devices on the market that do not allow WPA2 enterprise um, so there's a way to uh, downscale this. And some companies do that just for backwards compatibility with old stuff so you can uh, uh, take the lower uh, security version TKIP or a combination of both. Um, if you don't have WPA2 uh, you can downgrade to just regular WPA <coughs> and there's also a mixed version um, so I guess for, mo for better compatibility you can pick the bottom one if you're setting up a Wi-Fi environment um, and I think this is also downwards compatible with web, the WEP old Wi-Fi standard. But yeah, most companies go full on security these days, and I will pick the top one. Um, there was no need to downgrade uh, because, uh, as you can see, the capture that I did was already this format. Um, I don't have the knowledge to go into very much details what this means at the moment, so uh, yeah, we'll leave that for another video. Okay, dealing with the results. So if you copy paste this over to an empty text file, so um, you do Control C and in an empty shell you do Control V, you end up with this. And Hashcat requires a format of username, response, and challenge. And, and there's a one tricky challenge here. The challenge is on the left, and the response is on the right. And our format requires the opposite. So, if you convert that to the string that Hashcat can deal with, so if you convert it by following these rules, you would end up with the username, bunch of colons, then the first part which is the response so reverted as you can see in the top then another colon and then the challenge so keep that in mind you need in order to yeah, be successful you need this you put it in a control C you open a new file you paste that in and you make sure to save this as a txt file so you can uh, call it uh, give it a random name hash uh, dot txt and you should be good so now the file is ready for hashing I already prepped my hashcat for this uh, this demonstration so you install hashcat on your windows machine you jump into the folder of hashcat and then you type in uh, cmd which will bring you into the console or you can open cmd console and browse to your hashcat folder whatever you like so with that hash txt also dropped into this folder and your word list uh, so you can find many videos and uh, uh, on word lists uh, but i downloaded one uh, from my kali linux machine which comes default with uh, uh, rockyou.txt um, I opened rockyou.txt and I found out there was a password in there, uh, 12345. So that's why the part 1 we gave it username, user hack 5 and password 12345 just for this, the sake of speed um, Yeah, in this tutorial. Alright, so I already run a couple examples here, so let's go to the first one. Let's see if we can find it. 
Where was I? Yeah, so we're gonna use this command. I will put them in the link below. So hashcat.exe uh, mode 5500, that's for WPA2 um, enterprise. Um, and then we're gonna use mode minus A, which is a brute force mode zero of brute forcing. Then we specify the txt file. You can also, uh, if you put it in, uh, in another, uh, other place, you can do it like this. But uh, I dropped it in the folder. And then you specify the rockyou.txt word list or any word list you use. And if you have it in another folder, you need to do the same here. You need to put it in here like this. Okay, so let's give it a go, and it's going to be quick. So it starts the program. Um, it's a bit of struggle to get the Hashcat program installed. Not only be it's the, the program itself is very simple, but if you have an NVIDIA G GPU like I have, you also need to download and install the CUDA API, or otherwise you will get a bunch of errors. And as you can see, I'm using a GeForce 1080 Ti. Um, and as you can see here, the minimum password length was 0 and maximum is 256. And it says, hey, I found something. Use show. Let's see if we can find the show version. So you, you type in the exact same command as you did before. The only thing you do now is type show behind it. And then it will output your txt file. But if you look very closely at the very end, you see it found the result. So let's say the word list is useless. It d it's done its thing. I think in my case, uh, if it would have to run the entire word list and it couldn't find a match, I think it will take like uh, 20 minutes top of my head. Um, but let's say it didn't found it. Yeah, in Hashcat you can also say, hey, uh, don't specify a word list. Just give me. Um, a random way of doing it. Just just figure out a random way to hash my hash txt file. So we're gonna specify uh, brute force mode 3 and brute force mode 3 is gonna give us the option to specify what kind of hashing it's gonna do. So if I paste that in here, in here you see it's gonna do a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 digit password. So let's say we know that the password is going to be 8 digit um, and in many cases you can know how many characters there are because some companies do specify it like 10 or at least 12 and as explained in video 1 people are not gonna not gonna bother with difficult passwords right because the company I work for in example every month I'm required to change my password. If I don't I can't log in. So every month I have to figure out a new password since I can't use an old one. So what what uh, employees are uh, tempted to do is uh, put hello one month after hello two. So everybody's going to pick simple passwords because every month they're prompted to change their password and they're not going to do uh, explanation mark one two five uh, hashtag add. They're not going to do crazy difficult passwords because in my case I have a laptop, I have a desktop and I have a mobile phone and I have a tablet. I need every month I change the password. I need to log in a bunch of apps like Microsoft Teams, uh, my email, everything needs to have an update. So yeah, it, it's a flaw in my opinion that, that companies work with this because what you're ending up with is people using a very s similar password and just changing one digit. With that in mind you can also customize your search behavior in here. So let's say I want to I want to search for an eight digit password and I'm going to use mode D and D. I think I have it here somewhere. Let's see. I copy paste a bunch yeah, in here. So if you go into the manual of Hashcat, you can find that the D is just uh, random numbers. So zero to nine. And then you can also specify lower characters by specifying a lower capital lower L or 
mode U, which is capitals. And there's an S for special characters. So it's gonna look for all, it's gonna do combinations with all these thingies. And there's a mode A, which uh, specifies it's gonna do everything together. So with that in mind, this version is gonna do an eight digit password and it's only gonna try numbers. So let's have a look. We know that the password is one two three four five, so it should work. Here we go. We add show behind it, and there we go. One two three four five. And if you want to do a ten digit. Oh, without the show, of course. Let's specify it like this, and it's going to start up again, and it still found it. But in this case, it would going to do a combination for a, a, a maximum of ten. Um, now, if you don't know what kind of uh, password thingies are required, so if the company doesn't specify, hey, it has to have at least one capital, one special, whatever. You can also use this command, and this command is going to do a brute force mode tree, and it's going to increment with a minimum of 8, so the password should be minimum of 8 characters and a maximum of 18. So you need to put at least 18 of those in here, and you can go crazy on here. You can do, uh, if you know that the first one is going to be a character, a special character, so you look up in the table, special character was an S. So you can do also a combination of this. Uh, it's, it's, it's flexible, you can go whatever you like. If you know specific uh, ways the, the company formulates their, their password, and sometimes it's even on the website. So. So in here we specified the uh, uh, digits again, so let's have a try. Starting up again. And as you can see, the same result, but it didn't use a word list. And it started with at least, at least eight characters, but it did found it. It's no problem when you go below. It will never go above 18. So that's the thing to keep in mind. Then there's an ultimate version, but this can, uh, yeah, there's the Hashcat website they mention. I think I have it in here somewhere. Yeah, it's written in Dutch, but you can't, uh, you don't need to, I will translate it for you. So if you, they say if you specify a brute force with five characters, uh, smalls, it's going to take one second. If you do, uh, five character smalls capitals it's going to take six seconds if you're going to do smalls capitals numbers it's going to take 20 seconds but let's go extreme let's say 10 characters smalls capitals digits and symbols <laughs> yeah, it, with an average video card 1050 ti i believe they took is uh, 600 years so yeah there's a limit on how far you can go with this But the cool thing about this way, so if, we, if you look at this, we specified hash brute force and then the number of digits, eight digits, and all numbers. But if you want to go crazy, you can use the uh, the A mode, which is a combination of all of those above. But let's say you know it's digits, it's smalls, it's capitals, but there won't be any special characters in this. You can also make a custom one. So you say, hey, I want uh, digits specified, I want lower capitals and I want upper capitals, but I'm not specifying the special characters in here. So the way you would do that, you specify the order in here, you do the same brute force as before, but instead of saying digits, uh, lowers, or capitals, or special characters, you specify the mode you did in here. See? So, in, in, and you do specify the number of characters by 
putting the amount of ones in here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it, it, with a maximum of ten. Well, let's see what that does. So, so it's going to look for everything, but not special characters. Here we go again. And as you can see, it still found it. But it would uh, do a very advanced search on this. So, yeah, I hope you learned a thing or two. Um, this is how to use your pineapple on an enterprise system. And uh, this is your password. And this is your username. So, if the company has a very bad protocol, uh, and I'm going to be honest here, my company has, with my username and with my password, you can log into my email, you can get in my GitHub, you can get in everything. Uh, and every month I have to change my password, which is kind of a feel, eh, a kind of a safe way uh, for, for storing passwords. But as I said before, it's, I think it's a very bad companies do this. Because, yeah, in the end, what's going to happen? People are going to use simple passwords, right? They're going to repeat that over and over. And, uh, yeah, in my opinion, you can, it, it would be better to have a, a WPA2 a TKIP password and not have those uh, enterprise uh, radio server thingies set up. So, guys, I hope you learned something. I hope you're happy with this. It's going to be useful for you. This is especially in, uh, yeah, in government buildings, schools, uh, companies that uh, use their credentials for logging into everything and uh, if you have any questions uh, let me know on the hack5 forums i'm going to disable comments on the youtube video for now since uh, i get a lot of uh, dumb questions from users that have trouble with their pineapple i know it's a great product it can do a lot of advanced stuff but it has its flaws every now and then uh, i put a link of the hack5 forums in the description below so feel free to ask questions there i try to be as active as possible um, and if you're looking for uh, any of my work you can also visit my github page and uh, the github page will have you some evil portals and that kind of stuff so be sure to check out my other videos i hope you liked it and guys for now i say thank you and bye bye